My name is Kenneth Paul, and this is my woodworking shop. It's a genuine pleasure to have you here. I make these videos to share with you the projects and the woodworking techniques from here in my shop. Today's project is your basic keepsake box. This box can be made as simple or as complicated as you want. It can be used as a jewelry box, a presentation box, a gift box in and of itself, or in this case, a gift for my sister, it will be a recipe box. The last time I remodeled my mother's kitchen, I saved some of the patterned porcelain tiles from the backsplash, and we'll be inserting those porcelain tiles into the sides and lid of the box. That way my sister can always have a little bit of mom's kitchen in her kitchen. Now, you don't have to insert porcelain tiles. If you want to, well, you can put no inserts at all and just build the basic box. Or you could insert, if you have little scraps of interesting species of wood, you can insert those. You could cover small panels with, fabric, with uh, textured fabric, insert those, uh, leather. Uh, the possibilities are up to you to personalize the box. Once you can build the basic box, you can make it anything you want to make it. All right, uh, I'm going to show you the box and then I'm going to walk you through the entire process from dimensioning the lumber all the way through to the end. And as always, if you enjoy the content, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, comment, you know the drill. All right, let's get to this. All right, here we have the basic box. You can see the porcelain tiles that I've inserted. The box is made out of maple. You can see I've used a Russo JB250 lid support, two 10 millimeter barrel hinges, I made a surround on the inside to hide the inserts of the uh, ceramic tile. I just used 1 8 inch Baltic birch, 45 the corners. Made a cover for the lid the same way. The construction is just 45 all the way around. Get it there, you can see everything is 45, so there's no end grain showing. And I've wrapped the grain around. If you look, you can see the grain pattern carries all the way around. When I built the box, I assembled the sides in the same order they were in the board so that the grain wraps all the way around the box. All right. Well, let's get to the construction of this. All right, let's get to it. All right, for this project, what we have here, I just finished remodeling my kitchen, and I had taken off the old tile backsplash that my mother had picked out, and I saved some of the pattern tiles that my mother had chosen for her kitchen. And I'm going to use those tiles to inset into the sides of a small recipe box for my sister. Uh, I'm figuring about a seven by seven inch box with a tile inset into the lid and the four sides. I'll use a Brosso JB250 lid support, some 10 millimeter barrel hinges, and I might use metal feet or I might use uh, rubber feet on the bottom. I haven't made my mind up yet. For the box itself, I'm going to use maple. Now, this maple board, about seven and a half by four feet, has a twist to it, has a bow, and has a crown. Now, if I were to pass that through my planer, it would come out flat, but it would also still have its twist. So, what we have here is my planer sled that lets me use my planer as a jointer. I have a video on making that. Let me show you how this works. One moment. 
All right. We place the board on the planer sled. Now I see it's still going to rock. I take up about half of the rock. All right, I'm going to pass that board through. It's going to be a little noisy for a moment. Dust collector. I'm going to make a couple more plastic passes on that till it's flattened and I'll show you it flattened. Once one side is flat, then I can turn it over, pass it through the planer as normal. But you can see what's happening here is the adjustable plattens on that planer sled stop the board from twisting, stop the board from bowing down from its bow, so it's forcing it to take an even cut on that board, basically turning your planer into a joiner. All right, let me get back to it. No need for exposing you to this kind of noise. All right, this side has been plain flat. Let's pull it off the platen. What we have here is one surface. Obviously this side is still bowed. Still twisted, but the side we just passed through is now flat. We took the bow out of it, we took the cup out of it, and we took the twist out of it by using the planer as a joiner. Now I can pass this through the planer with the service we just did down, and I'll get a flat board when it comes out. Watch my video if you want on making that. It's a handy item. Everyone's, a lot of people have a 6 inch joiner. Very few people have a 12 inch joiner. Again, this lets you use your 12 inch portable planer as a joiner. All right, let me get to it. All right, I have the first side we passed down, still flat. This is the side that was all twisted. Well, they were both twisted to start. Flat. No bow, no cup, no twist. Now I'm just going to run it down to thickness. I'm dealing with a flat board now. I mean, you could do this with hand planes. You could put a couple of winding sticks and work it, but uh, if you have a 12 inch planer, that planer sled is a godsend. It's so much easier. Just a few passes. We've taken a cupped, warped, a cupped, bowed, and twisted board and turned it into flat stock. Now it's easy to mill it down with thickness. All right. That's it for now. All right. Where we are now on all six pieces, I've cut two edges with the 45 and now I've rearranged them in their original relationship in the board so that when I assemble the box the grain will wrap right around the box. This is the left side, this piece is the front, this piece is the right, this piece will be the top 
Now the back, which would be here, I've got over here set up in the drill press. Now, what we're going to do here If I can get this in focus. I'm going to drill two 10 millimeter holes, one and five eighths in from the edges, two and five eighths deep, so that I'll have two 10 millimeter holes to put my hinges in after. Once I drill my holes, I'll cut my 45 on this edge. And then after the box is assembled, I'm going to make the lid one and a quarter inches thick. So when I cut along this one and a quarter line, my holes for the hinges will be perfectly aligned and already inside the back. All right, let me set up with the uh, drill here and we'll get those done. One moment. All right, let's get that first hinge hole drilled. that for depth and then I'll drill the other one and then we'll move on to cutting the blocks to size with the 45s on all four sides. All right you can see here I've cut one of the pieces seven and a quarter square 45 all the way around. What I have is my saw tilted away from the fence set at seven and a quarter inches and I'll show you passing and I pass well, I have two sides done, so I just pass the other two sides, that'll make my perfect square. The reason I've moved my fence to the left of the blade, my saw blade, like most table saws, is a right tilting blade. If I were to attempt cutting this with the table, with the fence on the right of the blade, what would happen is, while I'm cutting, the blade, the board, would be trapped underneath the blade. The fence would be here, if anything were to happen, this piece of wood has nowhere to go. This is a recipe for kickback. This, this is something to be avoided at all costs. Yes, I have occasionally run a trapped cut on special occasions. when the, There are times I need to, but it's something that you really, really want to avoid. Whenever possible, you want to cut to where the board is free and the cutoff is free. Because, like I say, what happens on this side, when you've got the fence here and the board here, it's trapped underneath that blade. If anything, especially on these short pieces, my God, it would take very little for this to get slightly sideways and you're in for a world of trouble. And by cutting it, if you were to cut on the right this way, you'd have the bevel down. That sharp edge would never register against the fence. What you would have to do is tape down a sacrificial uh, one eighth inch or quarter inch sheet of plywood on top of your bench, bring the blade up through that so that your board is a quarter inch up and then the bevel is hitting the fence securely. That's how I cut formica. When I'm, when I'm cutting sheets of formica, I put a, either I put a sacrificial fence on or I tape a couple of strips of formica on the table next to the fence so that the formica registers on the flat part of the fence and there's no chance of it being so thin going under the fence. So I'm going to set up with the uh, camera here. I'll cut a couple of these for you and then we'll move on to insetting the uh, ceramic tiles into the uh, sides of the box. All right. All right. Let's 
run a couple of these squares. Let me turn the dust collection on. Eye protection. I'm going to keep running the rest of these and then we'll go on to insetting the ceramic tile. All right, what we have here is I'm set up with one of the uh, sides. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a three and a half inch saw hole through it. Then to fit the uh, tile from the other side, I'm going to route in a square mortise that the tile will set in. But from the surface of the box on the top and the four sides, you will see a circle showing the pattern from the ceramic tile. All right, let's get this first one drilled. Old drill press. All right, well, first hole drilled. I'm gonna drill all the holes, then I'll set up a jig with this holder to route the uh, square for the uh, tile coming from inside the box. I'll show you when I set that up. All right, here we have the one bottom, and then the five sides with the holes drilled, and this one, We have already mortised the back of it. To accept the tile. And this is also the one that we pre-drilled for our hinges. Now, to make that mortise, we take one of our sides, the same, drig, the same jig that we used to drill them with, we match the top to top, because these are not centered. They're not centered because I had to allow for the one eighth of an inch I'm going to cut later to saw the top off the box when I'm done. Then we take our 
router template, which I just made a three and three quarter inch square cut out on a piece of plywood. And now I'm just going to route that. Hang on while I set up the camera. All right, you can see here I've got my router set up with a bearing, a top bearing bottom, a top bearing pattern bit. Okay. Now I'm going to use that to follow my pattern and route in the recess for that tile. Let me show you. Template. And now, you can see all I've got to do is take a chisel, square these corners off, and we've got the round window for the porcelain tile to sit in. Back here I'll set the tile in, hot glue around it, and then there's going to be a 1 8 of an inch plywood surround on the inside of the box that's going to hide all these openings. All right, let me get to it. I'm going to finish routing these out and we'll move on to the next stage. All right. All right, what we have here are the six pieces laid out, taped edge to edge with the outside faces looking up. It's left, front, right, back, bottom, top. Now the top is still drilled differently than the four sides. The four sides, the circle is lowered almost an eighth to make room to make up for the fact that I'm going to take an eighth of an inch off when I cut the lid off. This is centered, these are just under centered. Also, you have to remember these all have a top because I arranged these with the grain in the same direction, the same relationship it originally had in the board. So these all have to be top up. Also, we drilled the holes for the hinges in this back piece, so that you have to make sure is up. So once you make sure everything's orientated, you butt all the edges, tape them together. Flip them over. Now, what I'm going to do is apply glue, and then what I'm going to be able to do is fold this into position. Well, if I can get my fingernails underneath this, I will. There we go. This will fold, and then I will clamp it in position. I may use uh, tight bond wrap. I may use uh, 
corner box and uh, band clamps. Uh, we will see whatever works out the best. But starting out, tape together is always your best bet on this kind of 45 setup. All right, let me get the glue on and then we'll uh, start assembly. Alright, glue has been spread. Let us start the construction process. Just get a piece of tape on there temporarily. Oh, I need a rag. Nothing like not being prepared. Okay. Hold that for a minute. Now, let's flip bottom up. Get a piece of tape on that for a minute. Just hold it in place. Get the top in position. Cut everything square. Everything should be looking pretty decent. A fresh piece of paper to put down here. has to be squeezed together. All right, here we go. I think I'm gonna start with a band clamp. Now I'll move these up to the center. Center, about center, about center, about center. Give that a little tighten. There we go. Looking good. Oh. 
All right. I'm going to be boring you with me setting up the band clamps. I'll show you the full clamping once I get them set up. All right. You'll have to take my word for it that somewhere in that tangle of clamps is our box. I was going to use just band clamps and I had enough smaller clamps. I just put a clamp on every corner. That requires three clamps per corner. Anyway, we'll let her dry. I'll unclamp it and we'll take a look at it. Everything's looking good so far. All right. See you when we get it unclamped. All right. Here's the box out of the clamps. Joints all came out good. Let's see if we can get close up there. And you can see the way the grain wraps around because we put the boards on and they're real rich to the board. You can see the grain wraps around the corners. Oops, getting the camera in the way there. There we go. All right, what I'm going to do now I've decided I'm not going to put the feet on this. I'm going to leave it as a box. So I want to take, I want to ease this sharp edge. Uh, 90 degree edges like this are kind of prone to getting nicks, on, nicks in them. So I'm going to pass this on the router table with a, a quarter inch round over. And I'm just going to slightly round over these corners all the way around the box. All right. Let me show you that. Hang on while I set up. All right, let me turn on the dust collection and then we'll pass that through. Now, there we go, let there be light. All right, now we're going to set up to rip the lid off. Okay, hang on. All right. Now we're going to rip the lid off. When you're going to rip the lid off a box that's already built, don't raise the blade all the way through. Leave it short about a 32nd of an inch. By leaving it short a 32nd of an inch, when you're done, the lid will still be attached 
and you can just take it off with a utility knife. By doing that, when you make your last cut, there's no chance of the lid closing up against the blade and causing a burn mark. All right, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me get the dust uh, filter going. Now, you can see the lid is still attached, it's cut all the way through, except for one little sixteenth of an inch, which we'll just cut through right now. Now, see our holes for our hinges? Perfectly drilled through, ready to go. And if you look, no burn marks anywhere around. Uh, oh, a quick note on the 45s. All of these 45s I cut, I didn't cut them at exactly 45. I set my saw at 45.3 degrees. Uh, actually, if I did it again, I think I would go 0 0.6. But uh, anyway, you want it just over 45 degrees so that if it hits anywhere, it hits on the point. I mean, these are good. These hit all the way. Let me get over here so I can show you. These 45s close up the whole way, but by cutting them slightly more than 45, you're guaranteeing that the point is going to hit before the heel. All right. All right, the next thing for us to set up for is to uh, mortise in the lid support. Let me set up for that. All right, what we're set up here now for is to mortise in the the Russo JV250 lid support, my favorite lid support for small boxes, two and seven eighths, quarter inch by half inch. So I've got my router table set up and you can watch my video on making a uh, making the construction of this uh, router table. I got my stop block set up to make the mortise half inch from the edge, two and seven eighths inch long. So my right hand stop block is set up so that the edge of the router bit is half inch in and then my second block stops it at the length. Now you gotta remember this is two and seven eighths but it's a quarter inch bit so you set your second block minus the thickness of the bit so that second block is set over two and five eighths not two and seven eighths. Alright let me get this routed in and we'll take a look at it. We'll be doing it in stages. All right, here's the zero. We go here. Let's get this started.
you can see here is our route. I had the depth stop set for exactly half inch. And you can see what an absolute snug fit that is. Let me get that. All right. Now, a little bit of sanding. I'll get a coat of finish on this. Once we're finished, then we'll inset the tiles. I'll show you how. And then we'll make the inside surround to hide the back side of the tiles. All right. Let's get to it. All right. We have the box sanded. I have the box finished. Now, for finish, I'm a minimalist on finish. I want the I want to protect it, but I still want to be able to feel the wood. I put on two coats of General Finishes Satin Gel Varnish. What I do is I slather it on with a chip brush, let it sit for 10 minutes or so, then wipe it all off. Let it dry 24 hours, give it a scuff scan with a gray scotch bright pad, and then put another coat on, same procedure. Let that dry for another day. And then I rub in with a white scotch bright pad, Renaissance Wax. That's my finish. It's, I find it's durable, uh, very forgiving for a dust-free environment. And it gives me that finish where I can still feel the wood and not feel like a plastic coat is on it. All right. Now... We have the complete box. What I'm going to do now, make sure it's facing the right way, yep. <laughs> We're going to insert that tile. All right, let me show you how. Easy enough. All right, the hinge side is here. All right, this is the way I want it. I'm just going to hot glue them in place because then what's going to happen after I hot glue them, that board will go over them and you'll never see the back of the tile. And again, if you wanted this to be more of a jewelry box, you would put that piece of wood and then take a piece of shirt box, cardboard, wrapped in velvet, put velvet over it. Again, this is very much a basic box. It, be, it can be anything you want it to be. Any kind of keepsake box you're looking for, this can be it. All right. The hot glue I'm using is Gorilla Glue Sticks. Uh, it doesn't quite hard enough yet. I think I got it to heat up just a smidge more. All right, let me let that heat up. I'll show you it complete before I put the back on. All right, here we have the lid piece done. I'll show you that. Make sure that's in focus. Here we go. All right, you can see the inside. Again, well secured with hot glue. I've never had problems with that coming loose. Use a quality glue gun. Like I say, I use uh, Gorilla Glue Sticks. I've never had a problem. And what we're gonna do, now I'm gonna glue this over and that'll be the inside finish. Outside, 
tile. Inside, 1 8 inch Baltic birch finish panel. All right, let me get the rest of these glued in and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, the tiles are all glued in. Make sure I'm in focus here. I've got the lid support and I've got the hinges. Okay, now on the lid, I've already got the back screwed in, screwed and glued in. <laughs> Now, I'm going to put the surround, I'll show you, I won't glue them in right now, I'll just show you what I'm doing here. I cut 45s on these, I cut them an eighth of an inch tall. These will just slide in. And that will create the lip I'm looking for. Let me bring the box up a little closer. That gives me an eighth of an inch lip. I like to have an eighth of an inch lip around that helps to register the lid. Keeps the lid from being able to move around. The hinges do that, but I like to have that little 1 8 inch reveal. I like the look. And in this case, I'm using these to hide the inside of the tile. Now, I built this box with the tile inserts, but this is my basic uh, keepsake box. I use the same box design for a small jewelry box, for a small presentation box, uh, a, a gift box itself. Uh, you can add these tiles, you can add hardwood inserts uh, of different species to make it interesting. You can line the inside of it with uh, suede, you can line the inside of it with velvet, you can you obviously forego the holes altogether or Make them whatever shape you want. Make them hearts. Make a little router jig. Make heart shapes. Anything you want to do. Or you can do as in one of my other videos and do the uh, wood inlays like I did with the bonsai tree on the uh, doing wood inlays with a uh, multiple stack uh, acrylic patterns. Uh, you can see that video if you want. But... Uh, I'm going to set up now, get the lid installed, I'll glue in that inside surround, and that's pretty much it. But like I say, this is a basic box. Because of the way we cut it, we ripped a 45 on the length of a board, then cut it oversized with 45s, and then we did two cuts against the fence to square it off. You don't even need really a tape measure for this. You can build this box strictly by ripping that 45 edge, cutting it oversized, and then using the fence. Whatever you set the fence at, that's going to give you that you're a perfect square. There's no real measuring needed. This is a very straightforward box to build, and it's a good starting point for so many projects. All right, uh, anything else I wanted to mention on this? We covered the finish, the inside, the uh, types of hinges. Again, you can use surface hinges. You don't have to use the lid support. I happen to like the barrel hinges. And like I say, the way of uh, pre-drilling those holes, uh, best way I know of. And again, you don't, I've milled this down to 5 eighths of an inch. You can, this will fine at 3 quarters of an inch, half inch, whatever you have. Uh, on this one, I decided that 5 eighths was the look I was looking for. All right, I think that's uh, pretty
pretty much going to be a wrap. At the beginning of this video, I'll insert the uh, finished box so you'll see it right from the start. And again, if you find the uh, content I'm creating here to your liking, do me a favor. Hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment. That all helps. You know how it's done. All right. You have yourself a good day, and thank you for coming. All right. Bye-bye.